Hey guys, welcome back to Med Bros. Today we're going to be talking about something a lot of you have asked about, and that's extracurricular activities. This isn't going to be comprehensive because that's basically impossible. There's so much to talk about with extracurricular activities, but I will make more videos about those in the future, so please subscribe if you haven't. What I want to talk about in this video specifically are pre-medical activities and things about the application in general that you might not know. This is a pretty important disclaimer and that's no one really knows what's going on with med school applications, not even admissions committees. They might know what they're doing, but maybe they don't know what makes a successful applicant across the board with many medical schools and what makes a disastrous med school applicant. These are things that I found through my application cycle and looking at the applications of others around me in pretty great depth and dissecting what worked and what didn't. And also, um, other than those, I've also talked to pretty important people in the admissions process. So with all those things, I think I have a unique perspective, but again, it's just my opinion, so take it however you will. Now the first thing I have to say is that your GPA and MCAT score might not matter as much as you think. And that's because in the admissions process, your GPA and MCAT score are more used as cutoffs rather than your exact GPA competing with a similar GPA that's slightly lower or higher and that being the determining factor. If you have too low of a GPA, like a 3.0 or a 2.9, that might get you an immediate rejection from many medical schools. For other medical schools, you might not have been rejected with that 3.0 GPA due to a hard cutoff, but it's going to be a rejection because it's basically an unofficial cutoff that you were under that caused you to be rejected. Basically, it's more important to be in the range of a GPA and MCAT for the medical school of your choice than to worry about the exact GPA and MCAT score that you received. My second tip is something so many people are unaware of that it really needs to be said. And that is that research is way more important than you might think. And not just research experience, you really want to aim to get publications if you're looking to get into a top medical school. So in order to get those publications, it's a good idea whenever you're entering any research lab to ask if your work can possibly lead to publications down the road. I mean, some medical schools will basically just reject you if you don't have good research experience. And I know you might think that sounds really narrow-minded and there's no way that happens. It does. So please make sure you get research experience if you're looking to get into a good medical school. And don't think this matters just for those research heavy schools. Research is important for most medical schools, so make sure you do it. Research is even more important than most people might think because during essay questions or during interviews, you might be asked about your research experience. Also, please make sure to find a good lab to work in because labs vary widely in quality whether it's the amount of time you're putting in, the amount of publications you're getting for the amount of work you're putting in, the amount of time you put in in general into the lab every week, the uh, quality of the people there and if they're gonna give you the time and attention you need. Yeah, your general experience will change greatly depending on which lab you're in, so please choose wisely. The third thing you might not know is a pretty quick point, and that is that certain schools will reject you almost immediately if you don't work in underserved areas. So if you're applying to a school that is focused on underserved populations, then you wanna make sure to have some experience working in underserved areas. And you might not even know that the school you're interested in has this focus. Look around on the website and look if working in underserved areas is gonna be important to you. My fourth point is to take your time getting good letters of recommendation, but start early. You want to visit as many professors as you can, so if they jive well with you and you think it's going to be a good time being in their office and just chatting with them, then you can stay there for the rest of the semester coming once a week, twice a week, however often you feel comfortable with, and just work on getting a good relationship with them. And if you have multiple classes with that professor, then that's even better. And don't be afraid to visit them on the first day, get to know them, realize that you actually hate them, and then just walk away never to come back. because. To be honest, there are those professors that are only interested in themselves and climbing up the ladder and trying to get that promotion. Whatever they're interested in, they are not interested in helping students and teaching the class. So for those professors, just avoid them. 
And if you start in your freshman year getting to know professors that jive well with you, then by the time you're ready to apply for med school, you're going to have a bunch of good letters. In general, you only need two science letters of recommendation and one non-science letter of recommendation, but it's always a great idea to also get a letter from your research lab. Also, if you work or do volunteer activities or community service, you can also try getting a letter from there. That always looks good. So you'll have a bunch of letters and you'll be able to use them at your disposal during the application process. So more is better than less when it comes to letters of recommendation. But make sure you don't skimp out on the quality of your letters. So you wanna take your time to get to know your professors and ask them for a letter of recommendation only if you know that they're gonna write you a good one. My sixth point is not as simple as the others. So that's why maybe it's not talked about as much. Admissions committees very often don't pick the best candidate rather than the candidate that they like or that matches well with their school. And by matches well, I mean they're a good fit for the mission statement or a good match in personality. And that's why essays and interviews and your non-medically related extracurricular activities are so important. They're not as important individually, but some together they form this kind of picture of you. And that picture is what admissions committees will use to see if you fit with their school and if you're a person that they like. That picture of you and if the admissions committees like that picture is extremely important in getting accepted to a good medical school. So if you're helping the homeless and that's something that particularly jives well with a certain medical school, that might give you a great edge in getting accepted. Same thing with if you're enthusiastic about your research or even it could be something as trivial as if you're a pilot and the school that wants you is more adventurous. So just make sure during interviews and in your essays and anywhere to just try to be likable, friendly. If you truly are a good fit for your medical school, then being your true self is probably the best way to go to get accepted there. Because your essay, while other schools may reject your crazy essay immediately, the school that you want to get accepted to, if that also is what their mission is about, that may give you a huge advantage into getting accepted. Same thing during interviews. Your personality might be disgusting. <laughs> okay, maybe not disgusting, but your personality might be really off-putting to many medical schools. But the one that you're interested in, if they are also similar to you and you agree with their mission statement and their attitude towards medicine, then your personality is very likely to be a positive thing during your interview at that medical school. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there and not be a generic safe person. So that was just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to extracurricular activities. I have many other videos that I wanna make on extracurriculars. Please subscribe if you haven't and thank you for watching.